A short time ago, you, you brought up Donald Trump first here this evening. We've now seen the polling done well after his proposed ban on Muslims coming to America. 36% of Americans, more than a third, agree with him. You have weighed in already on Donald Trump. You've weighed in on the proposed ban. But what would you say to the millions of Americans watching tonight who agree with him? Are they wrong? Well, I think a lot of people are understandably reacting out of fear and anxiety uh, about what they're seeing. First, what they saw in Paris, now what they have seen in San Bernardino. Um, and Mr. Trump has a great capacity uh, to use bluster and bigotry to inflame people and to make them think there are easy answers to very complex questions. So what I would say is, number one, we need to be united against the threats that we face. We need to have everybody in our country focused on watching what happens and reporting it if it's suspicious, reporting what you hear, making sure that Muslim Americans don't feel left out or marginalized at the very moment when we need their help. You know, I was a senator from New York after 9-11, and we spent countless hours trying to figure out how to protect the city and the state from perhaps additional attacks. One of the best things that was done, and George W. Bush did this, and I give him credit, was to reach out to Muslim Americans and say, we're in this together. You are not our adversary. You are our partner. And we also need to make sure that the really discriminatory messages that Trump is sending around the world don't fall on receptive ears. He is becoming ISIS's best recruiter. They are going to people showing videos of Donald Trump insulting Islam and Muslims in order to recruit more radical jihadists. So I want to explain why this is not in America's interest to react with this kind of fear and respond to this sort of bigotry.